Look, man, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about this farmer guy. I just need a wheat and two beets. You got a wheat and two beets? Yeah, man, I, I know who you're talking about. I'm delivering this package to him right now. That's all I really know. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot me. Comes into my market. Wants to trade beets for pumpkins. Told him we don't do that, but... Eh, if he gives me beet and something else, I'll give him a pumpkin. Strange guy. Kept talking about buying his way up a victory path or something. I'm his regular customer. He owes me vegetables every month. If I don't get them, I get very angry. Taking a look at At the Gates of Leong, we've already done the setup, including selecting our initial vegetable to sow in our home field. Now, there is no real advantage that I can find to selecting which of these three you're going to plant. It's really more a personal taste. The game is played over a series of nine rounds, and that is tracked using this home field here, because when you pull off that last vegetable, that would signify the final round. A round consists of three phases. The first phase is the harvest phase. In this phase, it's really simple. Players will flip over the first field in their personal deck and place it into play, and then they will harvest one vegetable from each field that they have currently sown, and that will go right here in their cart. One thing to note here is if you ever, other than your home field, if you ever pull the last vegetable off a of field, that field is immediately discarded from the game. In phase two, we have the card phase. Now, during this phase, anything that has been discarded at this point would be shuffled back in to start a new deck. You will start by dealing each player a hand of four cards. This will then start the distribution phase. In the distribution round, each player will be eventually getting two cards in which to play into their area. Now this is done through a draft process, but slightly modified. So whoever has this token is the current starting player, and the first thing that they will need to do is from their hand select one card to put into the courtyard. And we will designate this as the courtyard. So looking over the hand, I select to take this card and I put it down into the courtyard. Now from here, play goes to the next player. The next player would also have four cards in their hand. And they could select to either play one card from their hand and one card from the courtyard, or they could select to put one card from their hand down into the courtyard. And the play will continue around and around until each player has selected one card from their hand and one card from the courtyard to play. P a note to mention here is that if a player is ever down to just one card in their hand, they must play that card plus one card from the courtyard, and you always are gonna be playing that. Once you have selected the two cards you're gonna play, you immediately put them into play and any cards in your hand are added into the courtyard area. Now a note here is whoever plays the last action cards will take this, and that will make them the starting player for the current round. And the second to last player will take this, and the smaller one, and that will make them the second pl player to go. So let's talk about the different types of cards and how they're played. You have four types of cards. You have helper cards. Now these cards are played here on your board, and they will allow you to take an action. The next type of card you have is what's called a casual customer. And casual customers are played here and they allow you to deliver vegetables on a one-time basis for a reward. The next type of card is a market card. Market cards are traders who will allow you to trade vegetables with them for other vegetables and they are played here. And the last type of card, which is the Impo most important card of the game, is your regular customers. Now regular customers are played here and they are looking to get something every round. Whenever you bring a regular customer out, you will immediately put a satisfaction token on it. Whenever you bring out a market card, you will immediately stock that market with the vegetables that it has. Now, as I said before, each player gets exactly 
two cards. From here, we will move into the meat of the game, phase three, which is the action phase. Now in the action phase, the player who has this token is the first player. And in the Gates of Luoyang, it is not a turn base in terms of I take an action, then you take an action. You do everything that you can do for your turn. So what can you do? Well, the first thing you can do is you can sow vegetables as seed. Now, any vegetables you have in your cart are available to you. And so sowing a vegetable as seed is simple as placing it into a field that it is eligible to be played into, meaning it's listed up here. You would place one there and then you pull the rest from the general supply. The next type of action is to buy vegetables from the shop. Now buying vegetables is the larger, the dark, the number that's in the darker area, and that is the amount you spend to bring it in. So for example, I could buy a pumpkin here for four coins, and then I would take that pumpkin and place it into my cart. The next thing you can do is sell vegetables. Now selling vegetables does require that there be an open space and you will get the smaller number. So in this current example, I could sell this wheat and I would make one coin. Next up, you can use a market stall. A market stall is simply trading. And below each of the items in the market will be either one or two spaces. If it's one space, then it is a one for one trade. If there's two, then it's a a two for one trade, so you would need to trade two vegetables. But in this case, we currently have all one for ones. So I could trade this wheat here and receive a cabbage. Next thing is to use or discard helpers. Now helpers are the only type of card in the game that you are allowed to discard if you wish without penalty and without using. Anything else you need to complete its function in order to discard it. So if you use it, you can remove it, but if you also want to throw it out, you may. Now, why would you want to throw it out? Let's talk about that in the next action. The next action you can do is what's called buy a two-pack. Now, to buy a two-pack, the cost will be the greater of the number of either market stalls or helpers you have. So in the example here, I have one of each, so it would cost me one. But if I had had two market stalls, then it would cost me two. If I had nothing here, it would cost me nothing. And what you do is you simply take two cards from the, from the draw pile, and then you may keep all of them, one of them, or two of them, with a little bit of a rule here. If you decide to keep one, then you must have played immediately and the other one is discarded. If you decide to keep both of them, you must decide which one goes on top of the other one, because let's say I decided to use the haggler. Then the haggler would come down on top of this one, and this would not come into play until the haggler was used or removed. But if at any point the haggler comes off, this card would immediately move into its slot. The next thing that you can do on your turn is to deliver to your regular customers. And this is very important that you always try to do it. So each round they are looking for something and they're not gonna go away until you have filled up this entire row. But if at any point you cannot fill an order, this satisfaction token will flip over. So in this round, we currently do not have a pumpkin, and let's say we chose not to buy one. Then this round, it would flip over. But if on the other hand, we decided to, or we had the items or we decided to go ahead and buy a pumpkin, then we could bring the pumpkin here and then we could fill the order. In doing so, we would make four coins currently. However, let's pretend that we could not fill this order and in which case what would happen is we would flip this over so if on a subsequent round if once this is flipped over if we cannot fill an order we do need to pay that customer two coins this token can never be flipped back over once they are a little upset they remain angry. The other type of customer you can serve is a casual customer. Now these are customers who just want something one time and it'll be listed here what they want and they will give you an amount of money for it. Now that amount of money is actually based on your regular customers. If you have the same number of regular customers as casual customers, then they will just pay you this flat amount. If you have more regular customers than casual customers, they'll pay you, pay you plus two. And if you have more casual customers than regular, they'll actually pay you negative two. 
Whenever you fill a casual customer's order, that card is discarded once it pays you. These are discarded once you fill the last row. At any point during your turn, you are also free to take a loan, and don't be afraid to it will immediately give you five coins. Now, the thing is, is you can never pay back this loan, but it's not necessarily a bad thing if you need to take one, but it will mean at the end of the game that you will move back one spot on the scoring track for each loan in your possession. So once you've done everything that you can do for your turn, you will simply do the scoring phase. And the scoring phase is, will cost you one coin to move up one spot on the track. To move up additional spots will cost you the printed number. So in this case, we had started at the one, we paid one to move up to two, so we always can pay one, and then the next number is a three. Well, we can pay three, and that will move us to three. But in order to move again, we would need four coins, and we don't have four coins, so our turn would be over. Play continues this way until the final round, when the last vegetable is taken off the home field. And at that point, you play the final round and whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's a look at At The Gates of Loyang. To start out, I really like this game. It plays really, really well as a solo game, and I don't have a lot of solo games that are Euro games in my collection, so that was a nice surprise. However, I kind of feel like the game was designed to be a solo game and that the multiplayer was added in. Now the drafting is different from solo versus multiplayer, but that's really the only difference in the game. So I kind of feel like this game is multiplayer solitaire with a little bit of interaction via the drafting and via some of the helper cards. Two players pretty much plays the same as a one, other than the drafting changed a little, but it feels a little odd in terms of flipping over card and the drafting doesn't feel as important. Three player game is what I imagine the game multiplayer was designed around and that's obvious via the rule book because in a four player game the rules change again. In a four player game whoever is the first player picks somebody to be their partner and then the other two are paired up and then the two people holding the brown tokens go and then the other two players go and they're only allowed to interact with each other, so it feels really odd. However, it does keep the playtime to around the same, so that's nice. As far as playtime goes, you are gonna be looking at about an hour for a single player game, maybe a little over an hour for a two player game, and somewhere between 90 and 120 for a three or four player game. So there's nothing there. Outside of that, the game is a standard Euro. There's nothing that's going to be groundbreaking here. It feels familiar in a lot of ways. The component quality is very high. The, there's a ton of wooden pieces in here. And at first you're gonna have a desire to wanna separate them. And I did in, a, in my walkthrough, but I don't think it's really that important. You could just pull out of a pile of the wooden pieces. So the only other thing to keep in mind is the scoring track. Now you only can score at the end of each turn. And so it's very important that you balance when you use your money versus how you use your money to score. And that may be difficult for some players initially to get the hang of, but I feel like once you've played the game once, that is going to come, become second nature to you. And the fact that you will know at the end of this game, whatever you have still in front of you doesn't matter. All that matters is how far you've gone up that scoring track. Don't be afraid to take a loan in the game. It's not the end of the world because your other players at the table are probably gonna have to do the same. So there's nothing wrong in doing it. It'll set you back, but it might be worth it in order to fulfill an order. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at At the Gates of Loyang, and it's helped you decide if this game might be a good one for your collection. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. <sighs> These cards are interesting. I probably like the most like this messenger boy. At least I did when I was younger, huh? Who knows? Bye. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. 
Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.